we're going to uh, dive into yet another meditation, as uh, I'm sure you were expecting. The theme for today, uh, as I've been observing just the, the flows on social media in particular, um, is on resolving uh, conflict, and in particular, resolving inner conflict. We could say that the entirety of um, the processes that we've dived into over the past, uh, you know, many months have been uh, very much a um, solution to conflict. You know, when we are coming and looking inwardly and inquiring within ourselves and feeling within ourselves where there is uh, discord, where there's um, trigger, where there's um, pot potential for, um, you know, inner suffering. And we're coming into that and we're feeling into that and we're resolving that. Um, this is, of course, how we resolve uh, any sort of conflict that we're facing, of, of course, externally, because everything external is going to be simply a reflection of our internal state. And so um, when we look out into the, the, the world, let's say, um, uh, we are really just simply going to see uh, uh, what we are, you know, we are going to see what is the present um, standing of um, our collective energy. And so at a certain point, we may have done a certain level of, of uh, inner healing, where we have a certain kind of neutral viewpoint on a lot of the things that present itself uh, in, let's say, the world today. You know, there's a lot of many, a lot of many things going on right now. And that can bring up a, a myriad of different emotions and, um, you know, uh, just perspectives that some could be comfortable and others not so much. Um, and at a certain point, as we've come through our own process of inner healing, we come to more of a neutral standpoint with even the things that seem, you know, so uncomfortable or so wrong about what we view in our world today. And um, this is often kind of a signpost of where and how we're maturing on the path and how we're coming to a certain level of inner resolution. And what's important from that vantage point is this is where real change is going to be brought. You know, if we're looking out into the world and we're seeing various conflicts or things we like or don't like, or, you know, all these um, different scenarios, um, we're only going to really be able to bring change to these scenarios to the degree in which we've come to a certain inner resolution within ourselves. So we've kind of gone into this many times before, you know, and in, in just inquiring to see, you know, out of the topics and that are holding a certain energy in our life at the present moment, uh, what's arising in our body when we think of certain topics or sit, think of certain people or certain situations or tune in to the energies of various dynamics or scenarios of our experience. And as we do that, we can trace back in the body where that arises um, and then look to um, you know, bring that into resolution and balance. So this is what we're going to um, uh, do today, as you know, we've done many times before. Um, but I just was called to do this because, yeah, I'm just seeing, uh, you know, a lot of heightened energy uh, in, uh, on a variety of topics uh, at the present space as I scroll through social media. And I feel, um, you know, it just could be helpful at this time. So with that said, let's... Uh, Go ahead and get comfy and close our eyes when we feel ready. Whether we're seated or lying down, it's, it's all welcome. And we're just simply going to rest in this initial space with the eyes closed where the senses are not so much pointed outwardly of looking at outward objects or you know, engaging the day, we can just come, come to rest in what is present here. You know, we're halfway through the day. What is present in the body, in our mind, in our emotional state? Where have we come to um, as we've moved through this day? So as we come to rest in what is present and what is here, 
we can just simply come to that center point, that vantage point in which is observing everything that arises in our field of view, whether that's a sensation, a thought, a feeling. We can see very clearly that it doesn't really matter um, what's being observed. What's most important is just recognizing that there is an observance from a particular vantage point. And this observance is not really caught up in the who, what, why, where, etc., of the various thoughts, feelings, sensations. And because we're not so caught up in what's being observed, we're also not running towards things that are more comfortable and running away from things that are uncomfortable. We can just simply be with everything that is here and present. And notice even the tendency to dance around often things that are uncomfortable. Maybe there is uh, distractions that want to be looked at instead or kind of looking away or moving away from energies in the body or particular thoughts that hold a bit of tension or density. And so from that lens, we can see the beauty and the importance of simply surrendering into the uncomfortable feelings, sensations, thoughts, if, if any at all. And simply merge into everything that's arising. Essentially, we're, we're becoming welcoming, embracing all that arises in our field of view. Nothing is left out. And so as we continue to identify where in the body particular energies arise, and then naturally surrender into those energies or those feelings, becoming deeply intimate with them, resisting no aspect of the feeling, just embracing and coming into a direct experience of the fullness of that feeling, even if it's painful or uncomfortable. And as this continues, which there may not be much to be done really, there may be a very gentle or very neutral balanced feeling state in the body. And But naturally as we scan through the body and acknowledge all of the emotion which are, in which are present, the attention can naturally continue ex expand throughout every crevice of the body so that we have an entire awareness, a 360 degree, degree view of the entirety of our body. And we can see that any thought that arises that's connected to any particular subject matter or current situation or circumstance in our immediate past and future present human experience. We can generally trace back these feelings into some region of the body. 
every thought will be connected to a certain charge of energy. And as we can identify this, then we can start to understand and see that thoughts emerge, not just in the brain, but they emerge from within the body. So as our awareness expands into the body, we uncover uh, new thought forms and ideas, new perspectives. So thus our awareness of the entirety of the body becoming embodied within our human experience, we begin to uncover what's within our unconscious, bringing everything to conscious light. So when we look at the topic of inner conflict, which is often represented in outer conflict, we'll see that this is often aspects or areas of the body in which we have not yet explored or haven't been willing to explore or come into. And so within this intention, we may naturally be called to certain regions of the body to bring our love and compassion and simply the light of pure silence, pure abiding awareness. Often conflict comes with much thinking, analysis, looking to rationalize or understand through the mind. And so in this space, we have become clear in the notion that all that's required is a depth of feeling and emergence into the complete feeling of particular energies in the body that may or not, may not be comfortable or painful.
And as there's a ongoing return to this silent witnessing, there can be a deepening into the subtleties of the body, feeling into the most subtle layers of energy and sensation that move beyond the physical body and into the etheric bodies. Where we can feel even the most subtle layers of movement of energy or stagnation of energy and thus through that awareness we bring healing and bring an opportunity for further flow fluidity of our energy and recognizing that everything within the body is in constant change flow and movement and at any point in which there is a feeling of suffering or pain or illness. This is simply a representation where there is stagnation in the movement of any layer of the body. Sometimes even as there's a navigation through the body with the attention, as you're potentially scanning up and around the body, moving up from the feet all the way up through the back and around the head, down through the front of the body and then down into spine, through the legs and back to the feet. There'd be a cycling of the breath Simply sinking into this time space, this opportunity to explore the body in a new way. You're seeing the inner depth and expansion within these inner worlds that goes beyond just the physical realm, just the physical body. We can simply recognize here that as the inner resolution of any sort of inner conflict or distortions, density, as all of this has come to a certain balance and resolution, as we've sunken into these 
uh, energies and disperse them through the body, kept these energies moving and flowing so that no stagnation is present. And this starts to morph and change the physical reality that we may experience day to day and the world in which we each perceive through our own unique lens also begin, begins to change and shift. Where things that potentially were previously viewed as issues in the world that need to be fixed or changed, conflicts or things that are wrong and should not be, there's a certain acceptance that emerges for these things and a recognition of the divine right timing and right order of everything that is present in our field of view. And paradoxically, this is also what brings change and forward movement in the evolution of consciousness within our collective space and this planet that we're all inhabiting together. One of the beautiful but often resisted aspects of silent meditation is the need to just leave things be. Often there may be very charged topics in the mind or particular subjects, or things that continue to cycle back into thought forms and things to analyze and try and figure out. And while an analysis and contemplation can be quite helpful, often there is a, a lesson in simply leaving things be, letting things sit for a moment, similar to letting uh, ruffled sand in a pond just settle down again so that we can see clearly. And so this is what it means to come back to this inner silence, especially when there are a variety of charged subjects or particular circumstances we may find ourselves in that cause a, a real fluctuation in the movements of thought and feeling. So coming back to this simple silence, that really is no technique at all. There's not necessarily even any movement of breath or some specific method, just simply returning again and again to this inner silence and focusing upon the space between every thought, the space between all of the variety of sensations and feelings. Some of us may feel called to continue here for a little bit of time. 
continue to rest in this silence. Some of us may naturally feel complete. And remembering that the silence can continue even while the eyes are open, we can simultaneously continue to focus back here as we are remaining present through the variety of activities of our day. So whenever we do feel called to open the eyes, then this can actually be done. And if we have any questions or feel called to comment on that meditation or experience there, feel free to do so in the comments. Kind of a key element that we explored there, of course, is the recognition that any sort of perceived outer conflict in the world um, is essentially going to be seen through a myriad of infinite lenses, each our own lens. And because of that simple fact, we can see that with infinite amount of different perceptions, we are all going to see a variety of different types of potential conflicts. So this obviously points back to the simple notion that whatever we're perceiving is more so a reflection uh, of what we are holding inside, you know, what, what is uh, arising within uh, our own energetic template, you know, through our own filter and, and, and perception system. Uh, and because of that, uh, then it points us perpetually and endlessly back to uh, this sort of practice, which is that of an inner resolution, you know, a resolving of our individual contribution to these said conflicts, you know, because um, it's, it's often a kind of a, a game of, of blame or finger pointing or looking to uh, find who or what is the culprit of any particular you know conflict we may perceive which on the fundamental level is just something that we are very uncomfortable with and we feel that in our body we feel the discomfort and thus the blaming or the projection or the finger pointing becomes you know the the, the default response so when this is recognized and we see that it is actually us who is contributing to this conflict although this may not always seem so obvious on the on the surface uh, we each are extremely powerful in our ability to co-create reality among everybody else. So whatever we are looking at that we think is, you know, a conflict that is because of something or someone else, it is often actually us who has contributed, you know, to that conflict, to, to whatever that we're observing that we, 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 you know, just don't like, you know, essentially. And so when this is recognized, a certain responsibility is taken for everything that's perceived, everything that's observed. And from that vantage point, then the only real duty is to work, you know, uh, upon the resolution as we have done, you know, through this, through the meditation, through the variety of spiritual practices that, you know, we're all engaging in day to day, but it continuing to, you know, intensify that and focus that, right? Because if uh, the perceived world seems to have increasing amounts of conflict, it means there's an increasing amount of importance in spiritual practice, in uh, practice of devotion to truth, you know, within our own individual life and all the habits and ways that we engage reality and relationships and circumstances um, and, and bringing all of that to a certain perfection. Right. So we're not attached to perfection, but we're always striving for perfection. That's the balance. And especially in the times that we're facing now, where it does seem like there are many different so-called conflicts arising in so many different circumstances and all these different, you know, uh, groupings or topics. The, the only way really that change is going to be brought is, is coming into a resolution of those energies within ourselves. And this goes into uh, a certain perspective of not necessarily thing, seeing things as inner and outer. Because when we go beyond just the physical body and we see that our body and our anatomy uh, is, is far beyond just this physical self, 
then what we're perceiving in our hologram is actually inside of us. It's not necessarily outside as we perceive it. We think, oh, it's outside of my body. So it's outside and then I meditate and I go inside. Well, not necessarily. Inside and outside is just kind of a, a figment of mind. But in the reality of understanding our energy body, which is the entire universe, our, our individual body is the entire universe. Um, not as a woo-woo kind of just metaphorical concept, but as a scientific breakdown of our auric fields and our energy body that go up like, you know, like just some levels of our aura body is, is you know, 50 to 100 feet, if not beyond, you know, you could have an aura that goes the entire size of the planet. So when we understand it from that vantage point, we see that everything we perceive that's outside of the body is not necessarily outside of us. Right. And it's important that this concept is grasped because if not, then that's how we kind of perpetuate the me versus the world type of game or there's those things. And then there's these things, of course, there's a practical version of that. Um, and at the same time, there's also a practical version of seeing everything as ourselves or everything within ourselves. Right. So the practices that we've been doing um, essentially give the tools um, in so many ways for that resolution to happen so that everything that's perceived can be pinpointed somewhere in the body. And as it's pinpointed, then the resolution and the healing can begin. That's the only real way it can happen. We, we have to be able to see something for us to actually be able to, you know, do our work with it. Right. So um, that's it for today. Thank you for joining and listening to that. But a very important concept nonetheless. Um, I will see you next week, unless I see you on social media or in the ethers somewhere. But uh, be well and uh, enjoy the rest of your day.